So here we have the first example, and that's maybe the most important example, perhaps. So the counting measure. So think about S, pick your favorite set. It could be a set of numbers. It could be a set of uh, animals labeled by some mechanism, or, or it could be it could be something uncountable. It could be the set of all continuous functions in, yeah. But um, let's pick a sigma algebra on the favorite set. And if the favorite set could be anything, so let's uh, remember we can always, in principle, we can always pick a sigma algebra on any sets because we can always say that, okay, we pick the power set, the set of all sets. So we can always choose that this is our sigma algebra in principle. So then we have a sigma algebra on S now, whatever S was. Then we define the counting measure on S by, and we denote it by mu hash. And that's the measure which uh, assigns to any set A, the number of elements in A. Is that a measure? Remember, there are two things to check. So to check that is this a measure or is this not a measure? We have two things to check. So we need to check what would be the counting measure of the empty set. So this is by definition, it's the number of elements in the empty set. Well, of course, that's zero. So as it should be, so that's OK. Then we had this. Um, Countable additivity. So think about the disjoint A being a disjoint union of some sets. And then we look, oh, what's the counting measure of a disjoint union of sets? So it's the number of elements in the disjoint union of sets. But um, because when we are counting a disjoint union, so we can count each of them at the time and then sum the outcome. So that's why the countable additivity is okay as well. You might stop to think for a while that it's also okay for infinite sets, but, um, but um, with a bit of thinking, you can confirm yourself that the both things are okay. So this is why a counting measure is a measure. Is it the finite measure or infinite measure? So what's the total mass of, um, the full space, well, it is finite if our full set is finite. Yeah. And infinite else, of course. Yeah. That's about the counting measure. Do you have uh, questions about the counting measure? No questions. Okay, I don't get any questions. This is maybe way too simple and boring. Let's try to go on faster. Um, another example, discrete uniform probability measure. What is a discrete uniform probability measure? Take a finite set now. Well, let omega be a finite and non-empty set. And we take the power sigma algebra, the power set to be the sigma algebra, and we define a function p unif uh, of a set E to be number of elements in E divided by the total number of elements. And um, now we ask, is this, um, is this a measure? Well, let's check. Is this a measure? Um, we actually know that this uh, p unif is um, is actually a constant times the the counting measure of e, and now this normalizing constant is the one over the number of elements in the full set, which is now a finite and non-zero. So it's a nice number, this is constant C. So we have a constant times the counting measure. We just notice that the counting measure is a measure. 
And now it's actually very simple to check that, okay, if you have a measure and you multiply by it, it by a constant, so you still have a measure. So that's why this P unif is a measure. And then what's the total mass? If you plug in omega there, so you get number of elements in omega divided by the number of elements of in omega. So the total mass is one. This is a probability measure as you would expect. So um, a very simple thing from the measure theory point of view. On the other hand, from, from the probability theory point of view or, or for the kind of practical point of view, counting with this measure can be actually very, very difficult if your combinatorial object is difficult. So working with this is as easy as counting, but let's say some objects uh, have a complicated counting. Here is one example, but let's not go there now because this is not a course in combinatorics, but there are nice courses in that in Alta. I assume there are no questions on, on uh, the uniform probability measure on a finite set. Uh, or maybe yes. Uh, yeah, a, please a go on. Yes. From, from the continuous point of view or an, an infinite set, how would this work? Yes. Um, if we have a countably infinite set, so think about the um, the full set of integers, for example, which is a basic uh, countably infinite set. What is the what would be the uniform uh, probability measure on that set? Does somebody know the answer? In a way, the answer is that there is no uniform probability measure on the integers. So um, there is no way to make a uniform probability measure on the full set of integers because the total mass would be, would have to kind of the normalizing constant doesn't make sense because it would be infinite. So we don't have uniform probabilities on the countably infinite sets. And that's a very good question. Thanks, Philly. Um, that's also actually a problem in, let's say in Bayesian, Bayesian uh, computing, because quite often you might like to have a uniform prior and quite often you might like to work on infinite uh, sets also and put the uniform prior there. Okay, what the real Bayesians usually do is that they still kind of just fix a constant density there in the infinite set and they say that this is the uniform prior. From, from the probability theory point of view that is a little bit of a cheating or a little bit of suspicious to do, but, um, but there are ways to turn around. So. Yes. Um, actually, to this question, what uh, Willy asked, um, maybe the best answer will be given in a course called Large Random Systems, which is taking place after this course. So Large Random Systems is a course uh, during period, um, I think it was period four, or was it five? But anyway, I, I need to check it up, but uh, it's, uh, it's a continuation for this course. and. Uh, that course is actually really focused on probabilities on countably infinite sets and, and how to work with these type of things. 